Hello, my name's Elian. I'm from AC Designs. Um, I make knitting patterns, toy knitting patterns. And um, I thought maybe I would make a little a series of little tutorials of how to do things, how I do things, not necessarily um, the right way, but the way I like to do them. Um, to achieve my results, okay? So um, sometimes I get emails from people and, and they're struggling. You know, they, they, they have difficulty with faces or hair or how to attach pieces. So um, this is my go at, at trying my best to, to um, produce something to help, okay? So today I thought I would try um, to show you how I do my faces. All right, now generally I um, nearly all my dolls have the same faces, okay? So, um, you know, that's the way I do it. All right, so um, this is a NHS doll, and you see, and here's another one, right? You can see this one actually looks a bit different from the other one because um, sides are a bit closer together. So um, faces and expressions um, are very, very, important when you're making a doll because if you get um, a grumpy doll um, you know it's not as nice and attractive as a doll that's smiling all right so here we go so here's one I've made earlier so this is a doll that I've knit no features no hair on it yet okay um, all right so that's the first stage you have your doll I like to pull the neck in nice and tight now um, you get people who, who don't pull the neck so tight. Um, um, I like to pull the neck nice and tight and give it a good defined neck, okay? So the first stage is in my patterns, um, most of the more recent ones anyway, I make them a little wig. So I put, I, I, knit, the, I knit the little wig in whatever colour you want, it doesn't matter. Um, so you knit it in whatever colour, this just happens to be a brown one. Okay. And you place it on the head. Right, you don't sew it on, you just place it on the head. Because at this point, really, you're only um, trying to find out um, where you're going to put your features, okay. Um, you can either do this in two ways, all right. You can use a colouring pencil, um, which I use for the colour of the cheeks and give them a wee bit of rosy, but um, you can do a colouring pencil and you can sort of guess and put where you would put a nose. Or you can use these, like they're like wooden wooden pins that I got. Um, I got them free in a magazine. So you can put them in place and the wooden pins are good because you can move them if you if you decide oh no that's definitely in the wrong place you can move it about and i first of all start with the nose um and i go about halfway see i place my pin about halfway between the top and the bottom all right and that's where my nose is going to be all right so once i'm happy with where my nose is going to be I'm going to stitch it. I'm going to put a few stitches in. Not a lot, just a few stitches, all right? So I'm going to use the same colour of wool that I used for the, the face. I like to use a nice pink. I know faces aren't pink, but I like to use a nice pink. Other people have different ideas and they maybe use beige and things. But pink is good for me, okay? Um, I also like to use, a, you know, if you get a, a, a wool needle, it's blunt. They're blunt-ended needles. Well, I'm not keen on those. I like a needle with a point. And um, uh, sometimes they're hard to get, but I like a decent sized needle with a point. Anyway, the first thing I do is I'm going to stitch, as you can see, into the top of the head. Right, do you see that? So there's my where my face is going to be. And the wool is up here and I've, I just stitched it with a, a knot. Nobody's going to see, once you get the wig on, nobody's going to see what's happened up here. It's hidden. So I bring my my needle down. This is why I like, like a, a decent size needle with a point. I bring my needle down. You see it coming out where the, the um, just where the, the wooden pin is. 
right? Once I have that in place, I can take my wooden pin out. And I do, I only do a couple little stitches, a couple of little stitches. One, two, well, there's three. Um, if you make the nose too heavy, I don't know if you can see that or not, but if you make the nose too heavy, sometimes it doesn't look well either. So three little stitches. They're only like um, an eighth of an inch, maybe. Um, and then I go back up and I'm coming out the top of the scalp of the doll. All right. All right. So I've got my little nose on. Just looks like a little pimple at the minute. And I'm going to give it an, what I call an anchor stitch, which is I stitch it in and then I bring it through the loop. Now you'll need this anchor stitch when we're doing hair later, but this is how I finish it off. And it just stops, um, it, it, it anchors it, it just stops it from going anywhere. All right, so that's the first thing I do. So there's my, my, my nose in place. I've snipped off my bit of wool that I didn't need. So I've got my nose. You see that? All right. I always use black now. It's a personal choice. I've seen people with dolls with blue eyes and brown eyes and all sorts of colours eyes, but I like to use black. All right, okay. Um, so I use a bit of black wool. Don't make it too long, right? I thread my needle. Again, I'm going to start by taking it into the top of the head. And you're not going to see any of this. The only time maybe if you use, if you're making a blonde doll, um, you know, and yellow one is pale, you know, and you might see the stitches at the top of the head. Do you see that? But anyway, so I'm going to, do you see where it's coming out the top of my head? All right. But I'm going to come down again and I'm going to go to the right. I always go to the right first, maybe because I'm right handed. It doesn't matter what wet side you do first. I'm going to bring my needle out. Do you see where my nose is? Um, just a couple of stitches and it's to the right my right be your left all right so my wool's out there and i'm going to use a chain stitch an embroidered chain stitch all right so to do that i'm going to go up right have my needle like that do you see bring it up and um, then i bring loop my wool over and i pull i pull my stitch all right, it's hard to show you this at the same time as me do it, but that's my first stitch. And I, depending on how fat or thin you want the eyes to be, you come back down again. All right, so that's my first chain, right? Now, I think I would like to do a wee bit more than one chain, right? So the, the thinner the chain, the thinner the eyes, okay? I'm going to do another one, and I'm going to do it exactly the same place. You see that? I'm going to do over the the same spot and once I'm happy with that I'm going to come down from the I've come up my wool's up here you see that? I'm going to come down I'm trying to do it and show you at the same time not wreck a face um, so anyway and that keeps it in place all right so that's my first eye all right so there's my first eye can you see it? Now, the more you do, because if, if you look at this one, it's got like good big eyes. It probably did about four to make those eyes. So the, the more you do, the bigger the eyes. OK, um, but anyway, so I'm going to I'm going to leave that. at two. No, I might do three, actually, because three is a, a good number. All right. OK, so I'm going over the top and I'm going to do so a chain stitch over the top every time. All right. Do you get an eye that you're happy with the size? All right. Once you do that, you're going to take it in, into the head and you're going to come out the other side of the nose and you try your best to get it equal, equal distance from the nose and equal, you know, the height. You don't want one eye up and one eye down. All right. So you're trying to get equal distance. I go in from the bottom. All right, so that's the plan. If that's right, that's a wee bit low, you see. So you have to, this, it makes all the difference just being careful with this. All right, and you do the same again. So you do, because I did three chain stitches at one side, I'm going to do three chain stitches at the other. So there you go, that's the first chain. I'm going to close the chain by bringing it down. 
Um, and I'm going to do another chain stitch on top of that. So you've got three chain stitches and bring it down and then I'm going to do a last chain stitch. So, so the basically, do you see that? So chain stitch is when you put your needle in and I'm coming up, I come up usually by three stitches, okay? And I'm going to wrap my wool around my needle and I'm going to pull my, my needle out. And then, you know, you use your nail and make sure that it's nice and neat and tidy and happy and hopefully that'll be it. And then I'm going to take from the top, I'm going to take it from the top of the eye out the top of the head. So, because you're not going to see anything that's out the top of the head. And hopefully that is your three, your three stitches. I'm going to, I just give it a wee bit extra in there so that it's not going to, come down through the head and ravel that will not ravel out okay so there you go that's the first thing there's me my eyes um and my nose I, um i'm with a bit of practice um this works out this isn't working out the best because um it's difficult to do it and and do a video at the same time but anyway so the next thing is my red and I use red for a mouth. Some people use pink. I use red. Don't need that much. Okay. And what I do is I embroider a little V. Now, the position of the mouth is quite important because if it's too close up to the nose, um, it doesn't look good. It looks like a, a wee grumpy one. So, um, again, my red, I'm going to take it from the top. Right. I'm down through the head, right, down through the head, right, and you bring it out. Now, let me see where, where I'm bringing it out to show you. Not too close to the nose, um, not too close to the chin. So there's a sort of a sweet, right, do you see that? Do you see where I've brought it out? And that's on my right hand side. So if I turned it all like that, it would be my right hand side. Oh no, it's not, it's my left hand side. Okay, there you go. So you bring it there, right? I'm coming down like in a, a V. All right, so I'm going to take my, my needle in and I actually and take it out the top of the head. That one's going out the side of the head. Do you see that? So you've got like a half a V. All right, you've got a half a V. And then I'm going to bring it in. I'm going to actually take that right so again I'm bringing it down right and I bring it through all right do you see that where I brought it through the bottom of the mouth I'm going to take it up there and I'm going to try and make it level and if you do a wonky mouth you just end up with a, a doll that's got a bit more character than others all right um, but anyway so there's my basically my mouth in place um, it look better once the hair goes on you know at this stage it doesn't look great but try not to do it too um, I'm just finishing off that that mouth isn't going anywhere you know you're not going to be able to pull that out the hair's going to go on the top um, generally I do this for all my dolls even my small dolls but with my small dolls what I would do is I split the wool so instead of having you know the the three strands three strands of the double knitting wool three strands I split it so I do two strands so just because it's a smaller doll and it's it's it's, it's nicer I'm not sure I like that face but here we go so there's my face if you look at the top pretty rough looking right next thing is I'm going to put my wig back on I'll show you how to do the hair someday like a proper wig um, but you know, at the minute so I'm putting the seam at the back right seam at the back okay I'm going to use my my tails of my wool that are, that are when I I um, finish off a doll I always lose leave tails and then what I can sew up so the, I'm going to sew my my, my, my my skull cap on. Basically, that's what it is, a skull cap or my cap. And, it, you know, I don't have to be that neat and tidy. I'm just going to sew it on. Um, 
and I use the wool that I have used at the, the bottom so right so basically that's near enough it if there's any bits because we probably will do long hair on it all I, I leave those in you know I use those as part of the hair so I don't waste anything um, so once I do this looks cruelty to cruelty to dolls this um, so once I've stitched on and you know I do it the whole way around I'll just make sure you know end of the head you don't want it coming loose on you um, so I'm going to do that and I do like a little anchor stitch again I showed you earlier you know so you do you do a stitch but instead of pulling it right through you put your needle through the loop and you pull and that just stops it from going anywhere okay so we're getting there with the doll right I've got a second thread out the back here um, if it's not long enough then it's easy enough to um, and I always give them a centre parting all right so you come up well don't always but um, quite often I give them a centre parting so I'm coming up with a bit of brown wool my same colour as my skull cap you see that I'm bringing it at the front bringing up through her head um, to the front and I do make her like a, a parting you make her like a I don't know what you'd call it like a a centre parting so it gives it starts to give the head a little bit of shape all right so if you can see that hopefully you can see what I do I do this nearly with all the dolls I do um, the hairstyle which is the bit the stitch on later is um it makes it different you know each one different okay so do you see that so can you see that I've stitched just a, a running stitch a bit of, just a running stitch up the center so I've given her a center parting now at this stage you know maybe you want to stop maybe you, you think oh, well, that's enough of hair I like to give the doll first of all a fringe and I'll do that now and then at that point we'll leave this because this is doing the face putting on the skull cap um, giving the doll a center parting um, a bit of a fringe um, and then I'll do another wee video on how I put the hair in and how I make the hair okay um, so I'm stitching in my because I'm going to give it a fringe okay now this is probably part of doing the hair but anyway so here we go now I mean you're doing the hair you're going to do this the whole way over right I've got where I want my fringe to be you see that okay I make I put my thumb in it I make a loop I come back up right and my thumbs in there my thumbs trapping the loop it's hard to show you but the thumb my thumb is trapping that loop and then at the top I'm going to do one of those anchor stitches so that holds that loop in place all right nice and tight so it's not going to go anywhere so you do about four five of those for the fringe all right and you make sure you always finish off with an anchor stitch I'm going to put two anchor stitch in there because I felt it actually moving so you do um, a loop right a loop where your I hold up my finger okay and then I do a, an anchor stitch or a couple of anchor stitches and that stops that will stop that that loop going anywhere that loops gonna stay there so I give it a fringe right um, and just I'm doing there's three uh, that's not that's more than three that's one two three four loops at the minute I'm gonna give it one more five loops right doesn't really matter you do what yeah what, um, the amount you want but I like to give them a fringe I think they look prettier with a fringe okay so there's my 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 loops you see okay so now I'm gonna just stitch that out of the way because I'm gonna actually use that when I'm doing the hair all right um at this point I'm 
I'm not going to trim it, but you could. You could you could actually trim that wee fringe a wee bit. Um, at this point, I'm not going to bother because I'm going to wait until I put the long hair in. Okay. Um, the other thing you can do, which I like to do is finish it all, is here's my colour and pencil. Okay. And now I just dip it in a wee tiny bit of water. All right. Now, it doesn't matter if you go too heavy with this because it you can rub it off you know it, it sort of it fades through time anyway okay so i just give the face just at the cheeks do you see that a very light Let's see if i can get it in such a way that you can see it oh dear dolls upside down and everything not really right so i'm just giving it a very light with a coloring in pencil and then i, I I'd stamp and then i give it a wee rub and if it's too rosy you see that you see, and I, give, I always put a wee touch in the end of her nose, um, just a wee, a wee bit, and a bit the other side. And depending on the doll, some dolls are rosier than others. If you're making a fisherman and he's outside, you want a fisherwoman, and on the right side, you want maybe you want the rosier cheeks. But I always think it gives the dolls a wee bit of um, personality when they've got their faces rosied up. Okay, can you see? So we'll finish that now. That's longer than I thought it would take. But anyway, it's only my first to try it and see how it would go. Um, hopefully, um, people will, will, will use these um, little videos. And um, let's, I'm gonna try, I'll try another one. I'll, try, I'll see how it goes and I'll try another one. I'll maybe do the hair next. That would be a good thing. So, um, I'm going to put these on my website. I'm going to put them up to YouTube. I haven't got my YouTube channel started yet, so I'm going to put them up to YouTube. I'll put them into my website, and whenever people buy my patterns, I'll direct them to that page where they can um, they can actually go on and have a wee look and see if it helps. Okay. And thank you very much for watching. Um, wasn't too bad, was it? Okay. Thank you. Bye.